Welcome back to Stanley the Explorer. Today we are going to talk about credit card and how immigrants can get their credit card. And we are also going to talk about the credit score and how to build your credit score. Stay with me as we explore this topic. First of all, the United States is a credit nation. People do purchases on credit. So therefore people need to have credit card. So this credit card that you get from either bank or credit union, it's money that you're given in advance. You're given money to spend in advance and then you're going to pay it. It's a loan. And then after a certain period of time, you can start paying that loan on interest. But they encourage people to use the credit system so that they can assess your credit score. To break down on the credit system, there's a time I went to a furniture shop to purchase my dining set. I had the money to purchase that dining set. I had done window shopping and I knew the cost of that dining set. But now when it was time to make the payment, they were asking me, how are you going to pay, to pay for it? I told them I'm going to pay cash. And then they were like, we have this payment plan where you can be paying $50 per month for 24 months. And then the first six months, you not pay interest, but you can still finish paying it off within the first six months. So they are telling me, just keep the money in your pocket and then you can be paying small amounts, small amounts each and every month. And I was like, I don't want to have a loan. Like, because I have the money, let me just pay it off. And it was a push and pull, push and pull between me and the salesperson. So that's how serious it is. Another time, a friend of mine was buying a phone for her daughter. So she had already saved the money for the phone. When she was paying, the people, those, uh, the sales person was telling her, you can pay, we have a payment plan, which is interest free. You'll pay this amount of money for this period and it's interest free. And for her, she was like, I have the money, I want to buy it cash, like I want to pay it off once and for all. The sales person even went to get the manager. The manager was telling her like, she doesn't have to pay the whole amount, she can pay this small amount each and every month and it's interest free. This is how serious the credit system is in the US. I was telling myself, if now you have this amount of money you're paying per month, you already have your bills and then you, you add this small amount of money that is, that is coming out from you each and every month, you know when you add 50 plus 20 plus that, it becomes a lot of money. So if someone has that amount of money to pay cash, like to pay it off, the better because each and every day the bills keep on coming. Like each and every day you have different needs and the bills will keep on piling up. It looks like a good thing, like you're paying small amount of money, but this small, small amount of money that you keep on paying monthly, it becomes more when you add your bills and other expenditure. Let's talk about the credit score. The credit score is a system that is designed to assess your responsibility in borrowing, like how you spend borrowed money. Let's say, for example, you have you have been given one hundred dollars. You are supposed to spend thirty percent of that money. That means you'll spend thirty dollars. That's just an example. Credit system. You are given money in advance. That's why you have the credit card, and then they want you to. They want to assess your responsible spending, whereby you are supposed to spend only 30% of that money. If you spend more, you can spend more than that because you have access to money, but that will affect your credit score. Instead of your credit score going up, it will go down because they see that you are spending more than 30%. So in short, they want you to spend 30% of the money they're giving you. It's like they give you access to money, but you can only go this far. Like. This far is where you can only go, the 30%. If you go past that, your credit score will be affected. So that's how the credit score system works. They want to assess whether you are responsible in using loans or borrowed money. How can immigrants get access to credit cards? Number one, you can either get a credit card through a bank or a credit union. Now, when getting a credit card through a bank, it's usually very expensive. Because, first of all, when you come as a new immigrant, you are not in the system, they don't know you. When they look at your credit history, it's not there because like, you don't have a credit score, you're not in the system. So 
you are not recognized by the system. So it becomes expensive for you. For example, I went to to get a credit card from Bank of America and I was told to pay 200 deposit for me to get access to a credit card that is worth 500 US dollars. And do you remember that when you're given the credit card, it's money that you're given, but you still have limitation on how you can spend that money. At least you're only supposed to spend 30% of that money. So going to the bank way is usually expensive. The good thing about Bank of America is that they are lenient with immigrants when it comes to opening bank accounts. They usually like lenient. It's only that when you open their account, they will tell you that you're supposed to have a minimum of amount of money in that account. And, that, and at that time, remember, you don't have enough money. You are still trying to figure out your way. So it will depend on many factors. But going through the bank to get your credit card is usually expensive. So the second option or the best option is getting credit card through credit unions. The credit unions are like small banks. In Kenya, we call them micro financing some like these small banks they're not the mainstream banks so for example like capital one you can get credit card in capital one without making any deposit for someone who is new you don't have any credit score most likely they will approve you something like 500 but without any deposit then you can start building your credit from that level for those who came through agency like at least they have an advantage because they come already having jobs so their their credit card is usually approved at a higher rate for example like you will get someone having to be approved at 2500 like someone can get a loan of 2500 which is better than 500 at least you have some amount of money you can spend compared to the 500 that's a difference between those who came maybe through green card and the others who came through agency like direct to employment. Why is credit score a big deal in the US? When you're purchasing items, most of the time you purchase it like large items on credit. If you have a good credit score, your interest rate will go low and you have a high percentage rate for you to get loan approval. Even when you go to rent a house or you are buying a house, they will also look at your credit score to see if you are reliable, if you are able to pay your rent, if you are able to pay your mortgage. And the better your credit score, the less the rate of your mortgage will be. If you have a bad credit score, your mortgage rate will be high. Even when you are purchasing a vehicle, they will look at your credit score. If you have a bad credit score, the interest rate of that car loan will be high. If you have a good credit score, the interest rate will be low and even the better the chance for you to be approved to get that car. For those who came through green card, most of the time, like you have to start from, from down for you to build up your credit score. As days goes by, like your credit score will improve. And for those who came through agency, like they went straight to work, they are also able to build their credit score, but at least I find them starting at a, at a higher level compared to those who came through green card. But all in all, each and every day, you keep on building your credit score. Here are the tips for managing your credit cards and improving your credit score. Number one, make sure you pay your bills on time. In this place, if you don't pay your bills on time, it attracts interest or penalty, which will be unnecessary expenditure because every dollar counts. So make sure you pay your bills on time. Number two, keep your balances low. When you get your credit card, make sure you spend only 30% and ensure you spend the amount of money that you can be able to pay back. Don't overspend. Otherwise, you'll sink into debt and it will be hard for you to get out of that debt because the more you are in debt, the more the interest rate, the more that interest will become a new debt that you did not plan for. So make sure whatever money that you spend, you already have that money to pay it back so that you don't attract interest on that credit. Number three is avoid unnecessary payment. That is avoiding the interest rate, avoid the penalties, which I, which I talked about in number one. Number four, 
avoid having so many credit cards. The more you start building your credit score, the more you'll have offers from credit companies to offer you with credit cards. So don't fall into that trap of having many credit cards because they will predispose you to more loan, more debt. And remember, the more you spend on these credit cards, the more it affects your credit score. And you want to have a good credit score so that in future, whenever you want to buy a house, whenever you're buying a car, you'll get it at a good price because your credit score will be at least in a good position. Number five, when you have a credit card, make sure you use it regularly. You can even use it to shop for, for your grocery and just the normal shopping that you do. And then ensure when you spend that money, you pay it off before the due day so that your credit, card, your credit score is not affected. One last thing, there are companies that will offer credit cards with a duration of one year, which will be interest free. So for the period of one year, you'll not pay any interest. But from that period, after the 12th month, you'll start paying interest on the amount of money that you have already borrowed or the amount of money that you have already used. So when you can also look for those kind of companies that will offer you an interest free duration for almost one year, and then from that time, you can start paying interest. So that will at least help you to avoid having interest on your credit score and even unnecessary spending so that you can be able to build your credit as a new migrant in this country. Let me know what you think. For those who have more information about this video, you can write down your comments. Let me know on the comment section what other things that you want me to talk about and I'll be gladly to give you my opinion. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like and share.